Hi everyone, in this video we see one of the most popular and, uh, and basic trading strategies, at least among beginners, and uh, this is the, of course the, the mirror version trading strategy. And we'll write the code together on Python. I already started read, uh, writing, writing um, a little bit of code, which in particular is importing the, the necessary packages and libraries. Then I imported the data, which in this case I selected two stocks, which are the standard Poor 500, SPY, and, uh, and the Meta. And uh, I downloaded with the Yahoo Finance package a three years of data. So if, if you don't know how to download this data or you have your own method, it's okay. Otherwise, you can watch one of my previous video to to understand how to 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 actually download data. Then I computed the spread between these two stocks, which I I just used the ordinary square method with the which is already implemented in Python to, to calibrate our single factor of, of our model and then I computed the spread in this way. And uh, okay, now we can start writing the actual code of the of the mirror version strategy. So first of all we have to compute the the so called moving parameters, which are two in this case, which uh, in particular are the moving average and then the moving standard deviation. So First of all, we need to choose a rolling window days in the number of days, which I can select, for instance, 30 days. And then we to our data frame, which is DF, we can add two more columns, which are the moving average, which is simply the spread. Then we have this function rolling, and then we, we can use our rolling window days so 30 days and then compute the mean. So we selected the in a rolling window for 30 days all the data and then compute the mean. And the very same with the, the moving standard deviation. So moving standard deviation and here instead of mean we have the standard deviation which is STD simply. Okay, now we can compute uh, where is it? Uh, okay, here the mark, we can, I can I'm writing title so you better understand the code. Then we have the upper band and lower band. These uh, are necessary in the mirror version strategy, and we'll see later on why. And uh, okay, in this case we consider uh, a bound of four standard deviation, which is quite usual. And uh, in particular, uh, two above the moving average and two below the moving average. So we add two more columns, which are upper band, which is simply the moving average, plus two times uh, the moving standard deviation. And uh, the very same, but with a minus for the lower band. So the lower band is the moving average minus two times the moving standard deviation. And here we have the upper and lower band. And to, to better visualize it, I can plot it. So first of all, we plot the, the spread. And uh, okay, I write the label so that later on we can use the, the legend. And for instance, a few size good is of 10.5 which can fill the, the whole page and uh, okay this is the spread and in the same uh, in the same area we can use the upper band and plot it with the label upper band okay and the same for the lower band Okay, and so now I can add the legend and then show it. Okay, so you can see here we have the, the lower band in, in green and the upper band in orange. Okay, these are of course needed in a mirror version strategy and now I'll explain you in, in which way. So we can pass uh, to the main part of uh, the strategy, which is 
computing the positions, stock positions, which are buying and selling. So just in a couple of words, first we need the long positions. Uh, and the strategy in for the long position is to buy low and sell high. So we we buy when the spread goes below a, a certain threshold and we choose the threshold to be uh, the lower band. So when the spread goes below the the green band, so the, the lower band, we buy since we want to buy, uh, buy low. And uh, okay, we add this new column to the to our data frame so df long entry is equal to the spread uh, lower than the lower band so it's a, a boolean column okay when the spread goes below the lower band it, it this will uh, this value will be one and so we have to enter a long position and when will uh, we exit this position so long exit we need to choose when uh, the spread goes above a certain threshold so we can sell high and uh, this threshold is simply the moving average so df dot spread greater or equal than the moving average okay now i can just modify uh, a little bit the the data frame Okay, so we have positions long and we, we use none, not number, and then we have df at long entry, long entry, positions long, and the, the, the value will be one, so we want to buy one. So uh, we enter the, the position and then df at long exit positions long again will be zero. So we want to exit the position at all. So we want to sell everything we have. And uh, okay, finally, df positions long is equal to df positions long. dot fill an A and then the method will be a fill. Okay, let's see if it works. Okay, it seems so. And uh, we can copy and paste this for the short positions, but we need to be careful because uh, in this way, this is the opposite. So the strategy will be sell high and buy low. So we sell when the spread goes above a certain threshold and in this case, the threshold uh, will be the upper band, of course. So in, in the plot, the, when the spread goes above the orange band, we will, uh, we will sell. And uh, OK, so we enter the short position when the spread goes above the upper band. And here we will short exit. So we exit the short position when the spread goes below the moving average. Okay, here we just need to change long with the short, and here the same. So, short entry positions short. In this case, we want to sell, so the position will be minus one since we want to sell. And once we want to exit the position, position short will be zero. So we want to buy everything we we are just sold. And then we 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 won't have we will not have anything to do with uh, with this position. And finally, positions short and here again short. And uh, okay, it seems uh, works. Uh, and uh, finally, we have the just the total positions, which are simply the sum between the. Um, okay, we create this the sum between the, the positions long and the, and the positions short. So df dot positions long plus df dot positions short. Positions. Okay, 
and uh, now if you want I can just print the data frame so you can see the our results okay so now we can pass to the last part of the of the codes which is to a sort of back test of this uh, of this strategy which is computing the cumulative profit and loss okay uh, first of all we need to compute the spread shift on one day so we call spread shift and will simply be the spread minus the spread of the day before so we have dot spread dot shift of one since we want to compute the the shift of one day so spread shift of one one trading day of course then we are we I will have this new column which are pro, which is profit and loss and will be positions shift of one times our spreadsheet so df dot spreadsheet okay spreadsheet okay finally the, the cumulative sum will simply be the cumulative sum of this pnl so df of sorry cumulative pnl mean reversion with will be simply df dot pnl dot cumulative sum of of that column okay now we we see that it's good and we want to compare it with an uh, the most the the simplest trading strategy which is simply uh, buy the stocks at the beginning of the of the time window which in this case is uh, three years and then uh, keep the stock without doing anything which is the the basic strategy it's called the basic uh, trading strategy and so we, we call it cumulative pnl standards okay your uh, basic okay and uh, we simply have spy plus meta and then minus the initial the initial amount uh, so the this vector of zero so the first value the value of the stocks uh, at three years ago and uh, okay it wor is working now we just need to plot to see to see to, to see better the values okay so we have the cumulative pnl mean reversion plot and the label will be a cumulative profit and loss mean reversion again as before the figure size it's good to consider 10 5 so we can fill the, the whole uh, page and uh, okay i can copy and paste this so then we have the standard one no sorry we call it basic and uh, okay basic and then this is not needed anymore since it keeps the one of the previous line and uh, okay uh, then we just to have a, a better plot we can give it a title so the y label will be the cumulative profit and loss in this case in dollars since the, the stocks are in dollars and uh, then we can add the legend and then we show okay as you can see uh, here we have the the total cumulative profit and loss uh, of course if I if I change I can uh, change the the time windows to to, to do a different back test of our strategy and uh, as you can see it's a lot a lot a lot more conservative uh, strategy than just keeping the uh, the stocks and and do anything and uh, you see at the end you have uh, a lot higher profit with respect to the the basic trading strategy of course uh, you the the trade-off is that every time you buy and sell you you need to pay fee uh, a fee but 
which in the case of just keeping our stocks uh, is not uh, is not needed and uh, so when doing uh, a, a good back test uh, you, you should also consider fees every time you buy sell and and so on and uh, yeah that's it and you can see that the volatility of our trading strategy of our profit and loss is very low so that's one of the of the main reason that it's a lot used at least for uh, at least by beginners because not by banks but for beginners it's it's a good trading strategy and uh, yeah that's it and i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and stay tuned for for other videos and thanks for watching of course